Hello, everyone. Hope you all are enjoying ScribCon 2024 Day 2. Welcome to Thinking Outside the Storage Box. My name is Chandler Austin, and I'm excited to welcome you to this session. Here, we're going to be hearing from Marshall Simmons, VP of Sales at Scribbles, as well as Scott Francis, Technology Evangelist from Rico Document Scanners. Marshall and Scott, thank you very much for joining us. Um, take it away. All right, Chandler, thanks for the introduction. All right, um, we are excited to talk about thinking outside of the box. Look, in your school, in your school district, you've got paper. Paper's not the enemy, but the storage and management and utilization of the information on that paper is the problem. And there's an answer. So during today's presentation, both myself and Marshall are going to go through best practices. And these best practices are derived from talking to customers using our collective technology. So the, the great cloud services that Scribble software offers, as well as Rico document scanners. Just a quick intro, uh, Rico document scanners have been in the market for over 30 years. Many of you know us by our former brand, Fujitsu. We're now part of the Rico group, so you're gonna see our latest technology as part of the solution that we're presenting today. All right, so with that, we're gonna jump into the presentation. Chandler, uh, can you, it looks like the presentation is active. Let's get started. All right, first slide coming up. Does your paper storage look like this? And if it does, you've got a paper problem. Now, of course, maybe your storage area is off site or it doesn't look this bad. It still doesn't mean uh, that there's a great opportunity to get better. So let's talk about uh, to get started today the value of digital transformation for your paper records. If you haven't heard the term digital transformation, it is a, a very broad term. But for today's presentation, it's all about digitizing your paper and then using software and cloud technology to utilize and protect that information. I'm gonna start with some uh, use cases and best practices and then we'll segue over to Marshall, and he's going to talk about the cost of storing paper and the opportunity to increase the productivity of your staff. So what's the value? First and foremost, let's talk about the obvious point, space optimization. Everyone can use more operational space. Maybe we need more faculty lounges. Maybe we need to be able to get rid of the paper in the classrooms to make more room for students. There's a great opportunity and cost savings related to getting rid of those paper documents. Two, worker productivity. Your admin staff, faculty members, they spend a lot of time searching for information. And when they're searching for information, they're not doing work that matters. And their capacity to serve students and parents is diminished. So there's a great opportunity to save money and increase productivity. And of course, compliance. We all have compliance based on the states that we live in related to how schools and school districts keep student information information. And when audits happen, if information is paper based, the whole organization is turned upside down when we're searching for information. Again, we're not doing work that matters. We're not serving our students. We're spending all of our time to comply with that audit. And worst, there's potential risk. If we lose important documents such as medical directives, we might have liability issues. We may have serious situations. And of course, that can be avoided when we're able to store our records securely 
and access them quickly from any location securely. So these are the four main values that digitizing your paper presents. And this translates simply to a higher quality of education. We digitize paper across, our members are more productive, they're able to access information, they have better intelligence from being able to access that information. We're able to respond to audits quickly and effectively, and we're reducing our risk. So it might seem straightforward. I've talked to a lot of school districts. I've been selling document scanners for over 30 years now. And a lot of, of school districts get started thinking, hey, we can use our MFPs. We'll scan some documents to a network drive and we'll be great. Sadly, that's never a recipe for success. So let's talk about the actual journey from paper to digital images. The first one is the obvious one. It's the actual digitization process using some form of capture technology, whether it be an MFP, a scanner, a phone, a tablet, something's got to digitize that image. Two, when we capture that flat image, it's got to be classified. The file has to be named. It's a proverbial needle in a haystack when we've got thousands of images and we don't know what those images are. So a very important process is the classification of the images. And of course, we've got to upload those to the cloud or the network. But uploading to the cloud is definitely the best practice. The continuity, the remote access, the security, the green effect from minimizing resources, the um, lowering of IT resources. These are all great things that we can achieve by using the Scribbles Cloud and more. And once we do that, the information is secure and available. And that's really where the Scribbles magic starts with their host of services. And I won't steal Marshall's thunder, but really as we get those documents into the Scribbles Cloud, now that information is secure and available and active. And that is a huge point. So it's a great value prop. Digitize, classify, upload, and it's available. But there are some significant challenges. So first, paper preparation. This is typically the most labor intensive part of the capture process. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but papers in boxes, documents are stapled or paper clipped, documents are folded. They all need to be prepared. Actual scanning. Um, I'll give you an analogy of mowing your lawn. If you've got a three acre yard, you're not going to use a push mower. You're going to use a tractor trailer mower because you're going to be able to quickly and effectively mow your lawn. Not all scanning devices are equal and the scanning technology and the scanning systems you use make a big difference in how many documents you're going to be able to digitize. And I talked about classification. We've got to classify those documents and that could be very labor intensive as well. Today we'll be sharing some best practices, again, taken from school districts who are using our scanners and Scribbles cloud software. So let's talk about project management 101. So you're listening to this presentation, you agree. You've got a lot of paper and there's an opportunity to get a lot better. The first thing that we need to do is to get support of leadership. We need an executive sponsor or sponsors who are going to endorse this project. It could be principals, it could be superintendents, it could be school boards. But the first point is to reach the decision makers and show them the value that this technology and this undertaking can provide. Two, we cannot do this in a bubble. You've got to um, identify major subject matter experts and key stakeholders, and they have to be included. For any project to succeed, you've got to get your best knowledge workers who have that ground level understanding 
and you've got to interview them and include them throughout the process. The fourth one here, strive for incremental development sprints. Don't try to do everything all at once. You can achieve more by breaking the project into development sprints where you can have successes that you can build on. If a project takes two years to implement, by the time you get there, that project scope has probably changed again. It's much better to break the project up in incremental sprints where we can add functionality at every milestone. And probably the most key point for successful change management, introducing new technologies and systems, is communication and training. <laughs> Be information rich and train, train, and train again. If you don't do these things, you're going to get a lot of rejection from the users, and that's going to hinder the success of the product project. And these points are valid for any project management, but it's critical for document digitization projects. So let's talk about some keys to success. All right, that first one is critical. Work with Scribbles. Develop a project plan, a schedule, and a solution architecture. When we talk about paper digitization projects, we need to create what's called a taxonomy. And that's basically a system where we identify all of our document structures. What are our high-level structures? What are the documents and classifications for each part of it? Student enrollment might be a group of document types. Student records might be another group of document types. Two, a pilot project to prove the concept. Before you go live across the school district, you really need to test all of your equipment. Do you have enough internet bandwidth? Are you using the right scanners? Do you understand the real world throughput of those systems based on what the brochures or spec sheets say? Doing that pilot project is important. For scanning projects, you really need to scan documents at each storage location. Typically, that's at the school itself. That's what we see from most of our customers. Moving documents is very expensive. You can lose documents during that process. So the best examples we've seen is when we're able to scan those documents at each school location. And that paper preparation is a very long process so the best practice is to leverage the staff at each of those locations for paper preparation. They know their records best. They are able to do it. And this can be done over a full year before scanning starts. So again, the best practices we've seen a full year in advance, there are meetings, site visits to train, to validate resources, and to confirm space. So when we bring in a fleet of scanners, I'll talk about that in a moment, we need enough space and resources to do that. Starting that project a year in advance, getting buy-in, and checking in along the way, not waiting until two weeks before scanning day, but doing those on-site visits, making sure those documents are prepped, doing a QA. So doing a sample QA to make sure everything has been prepped correctly is also very important. This is another key point. In the best practices we've seen, the school districts implement a fleet of mobile scanners. Now, I'm, good. I'm not going to talk about models and specs uh, at length today, but our latest production scanner that you're going to see is just 55 pounds, and it sits on top of a table. So you can literally have 12 of those lined up in a cafeteria, a library, a media center, and you can essentially do that production scanning. 
by doing this moppier effect, if you will, you're able to digitize hundreds of boxes within just one or two days. This is compared to trying to use dedicated staff to operate the scanners on their own, trusting that they'll do it. Um, that could take years to digitize the same amount of documents. This system works. The documents are scanned at the location they reside in. The local staff is doing the paper preparation itself. The team management team is checking in with them periodically doing those spot checks and then on scan day we're showing up the day before we're setting up that fleet of scanners and within just one or two days all of those documents are digitized uploaded to the scribbles cloud and they are secure and available and with equipment with hardware equipment especially document scanners You've got to clean and maintain that equipment. High-speed scanners move a lot of paper. Paper has a lot of toner on it. These units can get dirty, but they can easily be cleaned. They have consumable parts that operate the picking mechanisms on the scanner. Our production scanners can scan 700,000 documents on a single sheet, a single uh, set of consumables. If you have a lot of multi-part forms, there's a lot of oil in those documents, and that might accelerate the wear on those consumables. They're not expensive, but you need to have them and you need to clean the equipment. So in the best practices we've seen, the scanners are cleaned after every full day of scanning. That way they're in peak shape, they capture great images, and they're ready to go for the next day of scanning, whether that's at the same school or the next school. So going back to that lawnmower analogy, it's all about the right tool for the right job. There's a lot of document, a lot of capture devices out there, but if you use the wrong ones, your project's going to fail because it's going to take a long time to scan the documents because you're going to have a lot of paper jams that are going to cause a lot of frustration because you're not going to pick up all the details on the document which completely invalidates the whole purpose of digitizing them to begin with. We need to maintain the true fidelity of the documents. So it's all about the right tool for the right job. So this is the scanner I mentioned. This is our FI-8950. We launched it in January. It's all about high-speed scanning. This is that tractor lawnmower. It can load up to 750 documents in a single batch. That allows your IT team who's running the scanners to load that scanner and then prepare the next batch while those documents are being scanned at 150 pages per minute. So if you've done scanning with an MFP or other device, this is a whole nother world. It excels in fast startup time. It actually has hardware assist to make sure we can maintain those high scanning speeds. It's got sophisticated paper handling technology to make sure we can pick the documents accurately. It has amazing image quality to get all the fine details the first time you scan the document. You have to scan a document a second time, it's going to take 10 times as longer. So you're going to have to visually find the documents that weren't captured correctly. You're going to have to find them in the stack and then rescan them. And the products have to be easy to use. Typically, you're going to use your IT team to drive the scanners at each location. Again, the school staff is doing the paper prep. The products still have to be easy to use. So when you're championing this project and you're talking to your leadership and they say, well, why can't we just use our existing MFPs? The answer is you're gonna, your project is going to fail. And these are the reasons why that having a dedicated scanner is so much better for this purpose. And these scanners have advanced settings. So first, a recommendation, scan your documents at 300 DPI. The goal is to just scan these documents once forever. So using 300 DPI is critical to 
capture all of those fine details. Color detection maintains document fidelity. So what does that mean? It means the scanner will scan each document. And if there's color content on the document, like a table or graph, it will maintain color compression just for that document. If the document is just black and white, it will use a different type of compression that minimizes the file size. So color detection allows you to scan all of your documents with one setting without having to change settings for black and white and color. You get the best of both worlds. You get the smallest file size overall while maintaining the best document fidelity. And I'm reading the comments. Thank you everyone for your comments. If you have questions, just put them right into the chat. Um, we are really excited about the new scanner. In the video here, you're seeing the actual automatic d to where it actually detects paper that was loaded in in a skewed fashion. And the rollers can work independently to straighten the document before they're scanned. We also have automatic document orientation. That means if the documents are upside down or right side up, we'll actually flip them. So when you access those documents from the Scribbles cloud, you won't have to manually rotate them. It's going to save everyone time. Auto size detection. Regardless of the size of the document, the image is tailored to that size. Our dedicated scanners can scan different document sizes and thicknesses and paper types all in the same batch. Our auto duplex means that we can scan both sides of the documents, but if we see a blank page, we can remove it so you don't have to. All of these things reduce manual processing. When you are converting hundreds of boxes of paper, these automatic settings are going to save you hundreds of hours or more in manual processing. And when we're processing boxes upon boxes of documents, sometimes we're going to miss a stapled pack of paper. If a stapled pack of paper goes through the scanner, the scanner is going to rip the pages out one by one. Those documents are going to have a bad day. Our technology involves separate sensors to detect any paper that's stapled, and we can stop the process before the paper is hurt. And we have additional paper protection to make sure that if a document's not going through the scanner correctly, we can stop the process before those documents are damaged. And we have additional technology to capture all of the documents. So you can see the automatic skew correction here in the video. Our overscan means we scan a wider area than the document itself, and then we tailor down the image just to the paper. We have ultrasonic document double feed. If two documents go through the scanner at the same time, this document is covered by the top documents. We're going to lose data. Our scanners use ultrasonic waves to make sure that only one page is going to cross the camera array at a time. All these features ensure that you're getting scanning done the right way the first time and every time. So I talked about paper protection or uh, paper preparation. It really is essential. And again, the way to do it is to have the school staff do this in the year leading up to scan day, because this is a very labor intensive process. We've got to remove the documents from the folders. If documents are folded, they've got to be unfolded. We've got to remove staples and paper clips. And that classification is also very labor intensive. So for the school districts out there, the most successful ones, they're adding QR code sheets in front of each record. This allows the software to actually classify the document on the fly. If your scanner is 150 pages per minute, there's no one out there that can name documents at 150 pages per minute. 
And if you do it manually, it's going to dramatically slow down the process. Now for day forward scanning, it's great to get into a Scribbles record and upload those documents. That's fine. But when you're converting hundreds of boxes of documents, you've got to be able to classify those documents on the fly. So using the capture technology, you can use QR codes. As you can see here, every time the software sees a QR code, we read that QR code. It's got the student's name, maybe their date of birth, maybe their student ID number, and the type of document. Maybe it's a health form. Maybe it's a transcript. Maybe it's a test score. And then we can name the documents behind it following that QR code. The next time we see a QR code, we change the data and so on. This allows you to load hundreds of documents in the scanner at one time with those QR codes. And that completely automates the classification process. This is another huge concept, um, a best practice that we've seen from Scribble's customers using our document scanners. The school districts, the local staff, in that year leading up to the project are printing out those QR codes. They're interleaving them into the documents as they prep the paper. And again, as an IT team, you're going on site to make sure all that's done correctly. And this is the magic. This is what allows you to scan hundreds of documents within just one or two days. Beyond just records management, there's a lot of use for scanners in the school and across the school district. That front office, everything that comes through that front office, every piece of paper can quickly be digitized. And that allows the registration process to be complete and run faster. And it really allows you to leverage all of the Scribbles tools. Digital Classroom. Teachers can benefit from this technology. They can scan all of their curriculum information. A lot of teachers shift from grade to grade every couple of years. They develop curriculums over time for each of the grades that they've taught. Typically, they store that in paper in the classroom. It takes up a lot of space. They can scan all of that and make it available every time they are teaching that class again without the paper storage requirements. If they have a paper-based homework assignment that they want to issue, easy. Scan it and send it out. It's easy to do. Having a scanner in the classroom when students turn in paperwork, have them quickly scan it. That way there's no question about whether or not the student turned in the assignment. If you're a teacher out there, how many hours a week do you spend on these contested, I turned in the paperwork, I didn't take a picture of it, I can't find it, Scanners solve this problem. Put a scanner in every classroom, quickly scan the documents. It's easy to do. Library capture. We have an overhead device that can scan large art assignments. It can scan books. It's another productivity tool for the students. And of course, school districts, there's a lot of capture applications beyond just student records. Human resources, all of those forms for when we hire employees into the school or school district. Accounting, purchasing, all those legal vendor agreements. Every time we lose a legal agreement, it could be a big problem, especially if we're trying to enforce some contract language. Scan everything, keep it secure. Scribbles has great tools for this, so you never lose those important documents. And here's a quick video of our desktop scanner. So this is our FI-8170. This is a top selling scanner in the document scanner market. And this is meant to be put right on the front counter. And I intentionally skewed the documents. So you can see documents came in at different sizes. In the video, you'll see that the images are perfectly straight and they are tailored to their document size. If you see those thumbnails on the left, I'll click on a five by seven card now. The image has been perfectly de-skewed and cropped. So again, it's about the right tool for the right job. This is great for that front desk. It's great for the back office. 
it's easy to use. So if you've answered yes to any of these questions, you've got an opportunity to really improve how your school district works. Scanning documents can be a cumbersome project, but if you follow the best practices we're talking about today, it can go very smooth. Here at RICO, we're a full service company, so we'd love to help work with Scribbles and help you get started. We're happy to do on-site demonstrations to build up confidence with your executive staff as we build a leadership support. We're even willing to put an evaluation unit for those proof of concepts to really give you the security that yes, this is the system that works. So here on the slide, you can see my contact information or just simply go to ricodocumentscanners.com. There's a welcome form, fill it out. Be happy to answer all those questions. So we've talked about the digitization of documents. There is a better way. But once the documents get into that Scribbles cloud, this is where the magic begins. So Marshall, I'm going to turn it over to you and we're going to learn more about the value of the Scribbles cloud to really maximize your productivity, your capacity, your accuracy. Marshall, please take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you, Scott. And that is uh, <clears throat> incredibly exciting stuff and, and really excited that you could join us here today. I think wanted to start off by doubling down on a couple of items and quantifying a couple of items that Scott shared around some of the challenges with paper. All right. So um, broad industry research search suggests that the average school, so not the district, school within a district, sends around $15,000 annually on paper. And that single sheet of paper, depending on um, some variables, has a fluctuating cost of between two and 10 cents. And so ultimately, this drives towards a pretty, you know, I think, a compelling and perhaps frightening metric, which is that the average cost to fill a four drawer filing cabinet is about $25,000. And that that will cost you an additional $2,000 a year to maintain. And I think for those of you out there, you can all understand the, the, the cost that goes into this when you think about the amount of four drawer filing cabinets that you have across your schools at the district and other offices that are sitting there with paper records, right? And so the simple fact of the matter is paper processes are a hard cost to districts. And sadly, I think most of you can agree that the budgets that you're provided with from the state and local levels do not account for the fact that this is an exponentially and ever growing problem. And that the only way to really resolve it, again, is to go to a digital uh, modality. So if we move on to the next slide. No worries. There we go. Um, you know, we've talked about the there's an additional amount of costs that are, are floating beneath the surface just from those hard costs, right? There's staff time. You get a records request for a record that's at a separate building or geographic location. You've got to go find that. A lot of times it's got to get pulled down off a pallet in a warehouse somewhere. There are real costs towards that. There's also a tremendous amount of, of you know, soft cost, as I would describe it, um, to students and and families that you serve, right? There's a lot of a, a time to go fulfill that paper record when a student or staff uh, or family member may need that right away. There's an inaccessibility issue around paper and something that, you know, many, many of the students and families you serve don't really tr have tremendous access to. And so again, it's not just hard costs here. There are soft costs to this paper problem as well. Um, if you don't mind moving to the next slide, Scott. The other thing I think Scott touched on, I just wanted to double down on is the, the risk that is associated with a paper-based process. We have heard countless stories and we receive countless customers who are in a very poor situation about a paper-based process or paper-based records keeping that has essentially suffered a catastrophic incident due to some type of natural disaster. And ultimately that has meant that records are potentially destroyed and lost, or there's a significant cost that the district will now have to incur 
to restore those paper-based records. And I think, and we'll talk about this a little bit more deeply, but the simple fact of the matter is paper is not a secure proposition. Again, we'll, we'll think about um, how that shows up in some various scenarios in a little bit, but natural disasters are just one security risk for your paper. And quite frankly, we're in an age where digital records are significantly more secure, regardless of the fact that you can't see them and they are likely not on a local machine uh, than the paper that you're keeping in your offices. Next slide. All right, so let's, let's talk about how Scribbles manages security on behalf of our customers, right? The first is all of our online document management solutions, of which we'll talk a little bit further about, are fully FERPA compliant. So they're designed and purpose built to manage all of the intricacies that we know our customers face around maintaining FERPA rights on behalf of their students and former students. We also go through something annually called a SOC 2 compliance audit. And the SOC 2 process is really the industry standard for SaaS based solutions to go through a third party audit process and ensure security and best practices around maintaining security parameters. And so, you know, any software that you have at the district that has been approved for use has likely had to undergo this SOC 2 process. It's a very rigorous process. Again, it's run by licensed and registered third parties. And so it, it is the industry gold standard. And it's something that Scribbles takes very seriously um, because it is so important to the work that we're doing on behalf of our customers. We have, you know, uh, fairly, you know, again, industry standard capabilities around having data be, being encrypted at rest, which reduces the, the risk uh, of any data malfeasance. We have dual authentication for our users so that we ensure people are logging into Scribble solutions um, that should be logging into Scribble solutions. But, and I think this is the, the two biggest things that I, I often come up against in talking with customers and, and future customers. One, our solutions are hosted and based on Amazon Web Services, right? And so um, we are using the leading public cloud provider to manage and, and store documents on behalf of our customers. And so that means that we leverage the entirety of the Amazon Web Services infrastructure, a multi, 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 multi billion dollar organization that provides that scalability and security back to our customers. So multiple backups are being taken of data across multiple data centers within AWS on a regular basis. Um, we also have the parameters of being able to shift between AWS data centers, which means that if for some reason there is a geographic event, we still have the capability to ensure that our customers' data remains safe and secure, but also that our customers maintain access to it. And so the simple fact of the matter is putting your digital documents into a public cloud environment is the most secure and accessible thing that you can possibly do. The last thing I'll hit on is all of our document management solutions come with highly rigorous but configurable user-based permissions, meaning you can give access to staff for only the students or student records that they need access to. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So the, the real start of the paper problem, in our opinion, is the student cumulative folder, right? And you all know it, you've got it all over uh, across your districts that manila folder that just expands and grows as a student goes um, through their learner's journey. And I think one of the things that we're really seeing is that that concept is becoming increasingly outdated, insecure, and inaccessible, right? You, essentially, you only have one cumulative folder per student, but you probably have six to 12 staff at the district that need access to it at any one time. And oh, by the way, they only need access to a specific set of documents within that folder. There's probably a bunch of things in there that they shouldn't have access to. And again, this is the cumulative folder for the students. So as you think about the importance of it in their lifelong educational journey, access for staff members is critically important, right? Teachers, nurses, school administrative staff, medical staff, all of those people play such a key role in that student's journey through your system, yet there's only one copy of the document 
And so you've actually made it really inaccessible for them to have, you know, access to the things that they need to support those students. I think we also, when I mentioned security, have heard the horror stories, right, of the student cum folder that goes home overnight in someone's car or gets left out on a desk or, you know, gets lost. Again, that's a paper driven problem. And so what we find is that through the use of Scrib folders and our customers' abilities to digitize that student cum folder, they do three things. They provide records-based and students-based access to staff who should only have access to a certain set of students or a certain set of records. We create a better accessibility for those staff because they're able to interact and uh, and engage with that student cumulative folder at any time they need because it is digital. And lastly, we reduce this paper cost problem and we reduce it at the root. So we're cutting down on the paper problem across the district by digitizing the student cum folder and we're not adding to that problem going forward. And so this is really where we're seeing schools and districts across the country turning their focus as they put this paper problem in their crosshairs. Next slide, please. The second piece of our digital document management solution is Scrib Online. And I know we've got a lot of customers on the line already that I, I can recognize names from who are leveraging Scrib Online. But again, this is you know pretty similar concept to Scrib Folders in that you have a massive amount of paper documents that you are by law required to retain for a certain period of time. And so digitizing those and leveraging the, a, a solution like Scrib Online allows for our districts to reduce again that paper problem, eliminate the access issue, and ensure the security of the records that they're required to keep in a much more efficient fashion. And I think again, Scott talked about the fantastic set of hardware solutions that RICO offers that allow districts to really tackle this problem because ultimately, and again, doubling down on something Scott mentioned, a big bang approach for digitizing your documents won't, won't be successful. It's too large of a problem. You have too few staff and resources to be able to do it. And so um, we'll talk a little bit about how we see district customers generally tackling the student CUM folder. But for Scrib Online, again, I think the, the, there's a couple of key point pointers here. First, one of the things that we know from the data um, collected through our Scrib order online records request solution is that somewhere between two thirds to three quarters of the document requests you're receiving for former student records will happen on students that have graduated within the last five years. And so starting with those records is going to make an outsized dent in the problem that you have around access um, and ultimately gets you in a really, really good cadence of being able to digitize your former student records in a way that will be, again, meaningful for the processes which staff have to interact with them, but also, again, reduce the problem and the expansion of a paper problem moving forward. Next slide, please. And then, as I'm sure all of our customers on here know, one of the unique values of Scribble Solutions is that our online records request platforms actually integrate with our online document management system to make the fulfillment and finding of the document that's being requested much easier. So Scrib Order integrates with Scrib Online, allows our users to search for documents that are being requested straight from the Scrib Order um, processing screen, simply attach that record and process the order um, in a matter of you know, seconds and minutes. And then next slide, if you don't mind, Scott, Scrib Transfer is our school to school records transfer solution. And again, many users I see on here are already leveraging that today. Same integration story, right? If we've got a digitized student cumulative folder, it makes it very easy and much more secure for you to process those records requests when you receive them and electronically fulfill those requests to securely send the student cum folder off to the uh, district that's requesting it. And so the last thing for me, again, is just talking a little bit more practically about, hey, if we're thinking about digitizing our student CUME folder, how do we start with that, right? And, and you know, the thing I would mention is, it's ultimately a decision you as a district have to make. And there's not one right way to do it. 
there will be a right way for you. And so we have seen districts that have gone for the big bang approach because they care so intently about solving this paper problem and creating access and creating security on their student Q folders. They don't wanna wait for six years to get to the, the promised digital land. That being said, we traditionally see customers following something a little more like this, uh, this uh, project plan that I, we're showing here, right? And so simply put, what we often recommend and see our customers do is digitize each grade that is entering over the course of five years, right? And so very simply put, you digitize the student QM folder for kindergartners, sixth graders, and ninth graders. And you do that every year. And by the time you have gotten through the third year of doing that, you have digitized over almost near 70% of your student cumulative folders. So it's all not an expanding workload. It's an actually a, de a decreasing workload as soon as you get to year three, right? Because you'll have already digitized all of your middle schoolers. And so again, I think as Scott mentioned, you know, a lot can change over the course of five years. And so it's important to have these key milestones and roadmaps to make sure you have pivot points as you go through the project and can learn and adapt from different phases of that journey. But it's also important to note that, you know, our, our customers that are doing this successfully are not doing it in a summer or a year. They're doing it over the course of two, three, four, five years. And that ultimately, you know, that delayed gratification is still reducing the problem, creating better access for their teachers and families and staff, and creating a better security around that student cumulative folder. So with that, I think uh, Scott and I are, again, really, really thrilled to be able to present to this group today. We're so thankful that y'all hopped on to, to learn a little bit about the hardware software total solution that our partner like Rico and, and Scribbles can provide. Um, and I'll check the Q and A's quickly, but if no one has any questions, we'll wish you a rest, a great rest of your script con. Marshall, I think um, a lot of great comments, but no uh, remaining questions. But um, I think that was a great overview of, of what Scribbles can do. And for all of our mutual customers out there, you're not alone. Um, we are here to help you share those best practices look at your unique requirements, your unique situation, and recommend what works best. So uh, Marshall, I wanna thank you very much for having us as part of ScriptCon 2024, and we look forward to more successes in the future. Awesome, well, thanks again for joining us, Scott. Really appreciate it, and uh, have a great rest of uh, ScriptCon and your days, everyone. Thank you.